What's going on everybody, Nick here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to automate staff payments using make.com. The automations I'm about to show you are extremely simple. They can save you anywhere from five hours in the low end to maybe 20 to 25 hours per month on the high end, particularly for agencies that have to do a lot of payment queuing, contractors, invoice juggling, that sort of thing. And you can also employ it in your own business as well as sell it to people. I sell systems like this from anywhere from $2,000 in the low end up to maybe $5,000 on the high end. So a lot of leeway here. We'll cover the theory and we'll also build out live in make.com. If that sounds like something you're interested in, stay tuned. Let's get into the video. Okay, so what I have here is a whimsical, and this is basically just a mind map showing you several of the most common ways that uh, people in a company can be paid. This isn't every single way. There are some commission percentage-based type arrangements that I'm not covering in this video, just because I think that's pretty conceptually simple once you cover the rest of this. Uh, but generally speaking, there are three ways that people are paid. And there's also a slightly different approach to you know, invoices and stuff like that that I'm gonna cover as well. Uh, but anywho, let's dive into it. Under staff payments here, we have three projects or categories or types. We have hourly rates, then we have project-based rates, and then we have flat or salary equivalent rates. Hourly rates are pretty simple, $25 an hour, you're getting paid an hourly rate. Project base is usually used in like freelancer type arrangements where you know every time somebody does like an article for you or maybe a website design, you just pay them a flat rate of a thousand or two thousand dollars. It's usually quite interagency as well. So if you're ever working like interagency, aka with another agency to do some service that you know one of your clients might need for you, you're usually paying them a project basis. Uh, and then you have flat or salary equivalent, which is basically just like you know every two weeks you get paid two thousand dollars or every month you get paid like $6,000 or something like that. So I think we're all probably familiar with these three different types of payments. We've either you know, gotten paid with one of them ourselves, like hourly rates are very common in just traditional nine to five employments, so our flat salary equivalents, or if you guys have ever freelanced or done contract work, you're probably familiar with project-based. But let's peel back the curtain and let's talk a little bit about, okay, you know, we know what these are. How exactly would you go about automating a system that does this? And so, um, you know, uh, I should probably touch on this. Like if you're, if you're an employee and you're, if you're playing some, if you're paying somebody like a typical nine to five, there are certain legal obligations that go with that. And you're for the most part better off using like a built-in payroll system or some type of like government interfacing system. There are thousands if you're in the U S probably a couple of dozen if you're in Canada and Western Europe. And I think there are a few for, you know, Eastern Europe and Asia as well. I'm not entirely familiar with those though, so I'm gonna leave that up to you to find. However, if you are dealing with people that aren't employees, which most of the agency world is moving towards simply because it's a lot more convenient, you don't have to deal with things like termination, um, you know, the contractor or the person that's doing the freelancing typically has more like work autonomy as well. Uh, so if you're, if you're going forward with that model, then this is really where this comes in. This is where you can automate like all their invoices, this is where you can automate you know, all of their, their payments that are being queued and, and that sort of thing. So I mentioned that because usually when you're working with contractors or people on freelance or anything like that, um, the typical process is the freelancer, the person on contract or, or whatever, will create an invoice for you and then have you verify that that invoice is correct and then pay them using that invoice. And you can either just generate a PDF invoice and then get paid through like bank transfer or something, or you can you know, send them an invoice via Stripe and then have your client pay or that sort of thing. The issue with that though, is it's very non-standard. If you let you know, 20 different people uh, invoice you in 20 different ways, then how the heck are you supposed to build any type of process around that? It's impossible. And so a much better and more effective way to deal with you know, the vast majority of agency payments, which are gonna be contractors, they're gonna be freelancers and that sort of thing, is standardize their invoices using your own invoice template. Generate that invoice with line items depending on whether they're hourly, project-based, or flat salary equivalents. Send it over to them and then have them say, yeah, that looks good. Maybe they sign off on it or something like that. And then trigger that action or use that action as a trigger to initiate the rest of an automation flow that either goes out and then queues up a payment and then sends them money or you know, maybe generate some list for your CFO to review to click a button or something of that nature. Essentially what we're doing is we're taking this like very variable sort of thing, which is like contractor invoices, 
and then we are turning it or adding it into like a streamlined end-to-end -end pipeline um, you know that we can we can integrate with our own systems and so that's more or less what, what all of these three steps or three um, payment categories are are centered around so for hourly rate for instance you can imagine how any system that would automate the payments of a contractor or a staff member that is paid hourly would have to one tabulate the number of hours that they've worked in whatever time period two multiply by some hourly rate and then three prepare an invoice with per potentially even line items broken down for different tasks multiplied by the hourly rate to equal the total and then send that over to them have them sign off and say yeah that looks good and then use that to trigger the rest of the flow so that's what the hourly rate flow looks like the project-based rate pretty similar you're going to, instead of tabulating the number of hours, you're gonna tabulate the number of projects, or maybe you have a custom field in your project management platform or something like that, which allows you to track the budget for every individual line item. What you're gonna do is, you know, every so often, whatever their payment period is, you're gonna run this automated system. It's gonna tabulate those projects, then it's going to, you know, figure out whatever amount of money that they're owed, add that up as a subtotal, and then again, we're gonna prepare an invoice and have them sign off. The last fat, flat or salary equivalent probably the simplest because all we need to do is just like figure out how much money they're getting paid every time period and then just generate an invoice for them basically every time period have them sign off so these are three different ways of going about the same process I'd say which is essentially just standardizing um, yeah, kind of kind of like what a pay stub is it's just we're obviously trying to skirt the definition of pay stub because uh, you know in like today's remote world you have people from all different countries working at the average business you know, this sort of standardization is just necessary if you want to be able to scale this up. And essentially, instead of you having to look over 10 or 15 different invoices every payment period, imagine if you're like a maybe low seven-figure agency or something, um, you just, uh, you know, you just click one button, everything just happens automatically for you and it gets sent out. And I'll show you exactly how to build this. So, yeah, that's the theory. That's sort of the motivation behind this. And it's something that I'm personally using my, uh, used in my agency. Uh, one second copy, it's... Uh, systems that I've sold to a variety of companies that you know just juggle so many payments every single month and I find that the accuracy goes up the reliability goes up generally speaking it's just a much better way to operate now how do you actually go out and build something out like this in practice well uh, you need a project management or a customer relationship management platform I'm going to be using ClickUp simply because I'm the most familiar with it and you know I think that everything that you're going to do in ClickUp you can do easily on any other project management or CRM platform out there so it's just simpler for me to do that and then I'm going to go out and I'm going to build out a flow that tabulates the hours, multiplies by the hourly rate, prepares the invoice and has them sign off. I'll do the same thing for project based and then I'll also do the same thing for flat. And then, you know, depending on whatever your, your bank is, if you guys are using like one of these more modern Neo banks, you can even do an API call and then queue up a, queue up a payment. So pretty neat. Okay, so let me jump into make.com here and let's build this out. I think I was just building this yeah, yesterday, but... I'll delete all this and then we can kind of start from scratch. And then I'm going to need a couple of these because uh, this is for hourly rate. We're going to do another one for project base and then a last one for um, flat. So we're going to say project based. And then this last one is going to be flat salary. You can see here I said contractor payroll, but it's not just for contractors, it's just for anything that. Any working arrangement that is not um, an employee is what I'd recommend. You can obviously use this to pay your employees. You just need to make sure that your paperwork is done and, and that sort of thing because, you know, in most places around the world, like being an employee just means that you are afforded certain rights and also have certain responsibilities that like a contract or a non-employee doesn't have. Um, so just make sure that you cover it. I don't know where anybody that's watching this video lives, unfortunately. So it's very difficult to say anything with more precision. Okay, so those are my three scenarios. I'm also going to build out a couple of spaces or lists here in ClickUp. Um, ClickUp, as I mentioned earlier, is interchangeable for basically any project management or customer relationship management system. Um, they all operate similarly, at least on like a conceptual level at this point. Essentially, ClickUp is broken down into spaces, and every space is broken down into a bunch of lists. And lists are sort of like glorified Google Sheets. And so you can see that I've built out a list here called the example payroll list. And there are a few tasks that have been created here, one called website development, another called strategy. They've both been assigned to yours truly. And then uh, there are two columns here that we're gonna use to pull data for our flow. One's called time tracked, and then the other is called internal budget. So time tracked, pretty self-explanatory. That's how much time it took for me to, let's say, do a task. 
I guess this, these are technically to do, but you know, again, interchangeable between your project management systems. And then internal budget is going to be how much money the company is paying me for that task. So the in internal budget of this task is $500, for instance. That just means whoever is the assignee will make $500. In order for the systems to work, we also need a staff tracker. Staff tracker just means a place that we can reference that includes like the name of the person that we're paying, the assignee, maybe we'll do an email column. Yeah, that, that should be enough. Uh, if, unless you misspell email, oops, like me. And need to go back in and then change it. Uh, but anyway, we'll have like a little email address here as well. Uh, and then we have an hourly rate as well. Um, and the hourly rate is just what we're going to use to pull. Um, let's also do one for monthly salary. And then let's just say I get paid like $4,000 or something like that. Beautiful. Okay, great. So now we have everything that we need sort of on the project management side of things to actually build out our whole flow. Like as long as you have some type of time tracker, you can do the hourly rate stuff. As long as you have internal budget, you can do the, prod the fixed price stuff. And as long as you have some type of place to store the monthly salary, you can do the monthly salary stuff. It's very, very straightforward, very, very simple. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into make for our hourly rate scenario. And then I'm just going to pull a function that allows us to list all of the tasks in a specific space or list. So I'm going to go to list all tasks. That's going to allow me to basically go through this list, example payroll list, and just enumerate the tasks. I'm then going to get their time tracked as a result. So I'm going to go down to select. Workspace is one second copy. This is just my um, example workspace that I use. Well, example space, I should say, called test build. <clears throat> I'm then going to enumerate example payroll list. And then uh, you can see it tells me how many tasks I have. And then assign EIDs. I'm just going to leave it as anybody. Well, actually, no, I shouldn't leave it as anybody. Ah, OK. So I already made a mistake here. What we need to do is we, we don't list all tasks in that space. We should list, we should list all the tasks in, my bad, um, the staff list. Yeah, yeah. So what we're going to do is basically once a month or something, we're going to trigger uh, this flow whenever our payment period is. Let's say it's like on the first day of the month. I mean, it's the first day of the month right now, so that's pretty convenient. So the first day of the month, we're going to trigger a flow. And that flow is going to go back and then add up all the time entries from the previous month. And then it's going to multiply those time entries by the hourly rate. It's going to get a total. And then we can use that total to generate some type of document or invoice or whatnot. So uh, yeah, we got our staff track right here. I'm not going to filter by assignee IDs. I'm just going to list um, everybody. I am then, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to do the limit as one. But you can imagine how if you were running this in practice, it would be a lot more than one. You know, you have a whole team that you're doing. And then I'm just going to run this on the first day of the month. And let's just say we run it at like 0000, 000 a.m. Well, I guess that'd be 12 a.m., right? So that looks good to me. OK, great. And then I'm just going to run this and see what sort of data that we get. So remember, this is our staff tracker. Uh, we just went over the list that says Nick's arrive with my hourly rate and that sort of stuff. So if I scroll down here and I go to custom fields, you'll see I got the hourly rate, I got the email address, and I got the monthly salary. I mean, like at this point, you're, you're basically done the monthly salary step. You would just tie this to something that creates a Google Doc, which I can show you in a second. Maybe fills it in with some invoice info. Um, but anywho, uh, yeah, we're, we're done the first step for our hourly tracker. Now that we're done with that, depending on whether you're using a platform with a built-in time tracker, like ClickUp or Monday, or maybe you're doing an off platform, you might have to um, query the specific time tracker. But you know, if you just go to click on type time, you can see that you can list all of the time entries within a certain date range, which is obviously super useful for us. OK, I'll go to Workspace. <clears throat> and now I'm going to select the assignee by going to Map. And then I'm going to feed in the assignee ID. So if we go to Assignees, you'll see that uh, the person that's been assigned is Nick Seraf, me, myself, and I. We're then going to add their ID under the Assignees field. Excuse me. And then we're going to map that because this is like a dynamic variable that may change. We can't just statically select the same person over and over and over again, right? We have to, we have to find a way to modify that um, depending on what the previous variable is. So that's what this, this map toggle does. Now, for now, I'm just going to set this limit really high. Maybe it'll be 200. And then I'm just going to run it to test what sort of output we get. And then let me just run this whole flow. Got the assignee ID. Now we're getting the time entries. And let's just take a look at what this is. So 
we see that multiple bundles are returned, so more than one. Uh, basically, every time a time entry happens, then we list them, it's going to be generating a bundle. And the reason why that's relevant for us is because every time that there's a new bundle generated, uh, that just triggers a whole new scenario flow from that point onwards. So we're going to need to probably aggregate it in some way. And we can uh, talk about how to do that afterwards. We then have a duration field, which looks like it's in milliseconds, which is great for us because that's probably the simplest way that we can go about um, uh, tracking time because all we need to do is divide this by 1,000, then 60, then 60, then yeah, and then I think we have hours, and then we can just multiply that by some hourly rate. So what's 60 times 60 times 24? Is that 8,000? Yeah, 86,400. Then I think we need to do one more of these. So I'm just going to then set multiple variables. Well, actually, I think I should just going to set one variable here, but we'll use the set multiple variables module. We'll say hours. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this duration. Oh, actually, we have a duration in min. What am I doing? That's really convenient. So we don't need to divide it by 86,400. We just need to divide it by 60. And then uh, we should be able to get hourly rate as well. I'm just going to store this here. It'll probably be a lot simpler for me. And then, uh, yeah, we should have hours. We should have hourly rate. And then, I mean, I could go through and then I could like get the amount right now, but I'm just going to test this out first. Um, the reason why there's a little red dot here is because I have an operator at the beginning of an expression, so I need to feed in the number of minutes. There we go. Gonna save that. Probably gonna get a warning. No, I won't. Okay, let's see what sort of values we got. So the first I worked 3.33335 and I got my hourly rate of 25. And then the second I got uh, I worked a quarter of an hour and I got an hourly rate of 25. Let me just go back in and make sure that this works. Yep, looks good to me. Um, now what I can do, that just because I verify that this works, I can actually just get like a subtotal. I can take these two values and then I can uh, multiply them together. And this will be my subtotal. I'm now going to run this. It's going to list all the tasks again. And then now I have $83.33 for that first time entry. Second time entry, I got $6.25. Awesome. So now we basically have everything we need to actually go out and then you know generate an invoice or whatever for our uh, for our contractors to sign. So there are multiple different approaches you could use for this. I personally just use Pandadoc and then I like create an invoice template and then I just um, automatically generate a, a list using a text aggregator. Um, I think we could probably do that this time. But you know you can also just use Google Docs. Maybe I'll just use Google Docs for the purposes of this. That might be a little bit easier. Um, we'll go date, I'll say name, I'll say email address, and then I'll say, um, let's just say like left click, we'll say to, and we'll say from, I'm just going to say example address so I don't start getting mail to my house. You guys have been awesome, but every now and then there's somebody that like sends something relatively creepy. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I'm just gonna leave that at that, and then we'll say like work performed, and then I'm going to just tabulate over it. I'm not gonna make it special, but I'll just say um, aggregated line items, and then I'll say subtotal. And then we'll put it underneath here as well. And then we'll say total. Actually, I should do proper grammar here. We'll have a total underneath. Um, I don't think we're going to, yeah, we don't, we're not going to like do any taxes or anything like that. So we're just going to say, actually, we're just going to do the subtotal as the total. And then anything else we got to do? We could tie this to a signature for now, but I don't think I'm going to do that. This is just going to be like our very basic invoice template. Wonderful. So now I'm going to go back here and then I'm going to go to Google Docs. 
maybe they just call it docs, I forget. Yeah. And then uh, we should be able to create a document from a template. There are a couple things we're gonna have to do in between these, by the way. I'm just um, just sort of templating this out and making it really simple. I don't remember what email I made this with, so let me, okay, yeah. So it looks like it's that. Let me see if I can jump in or if I have to update my connection request again. That looks like I will. Awesome, looks good. We are now connected to that email, so I should be able to select this document ID, which I'm going to call very basic invoice template, lovely. <clears throat> I'm gonna call this invoice for, let's do, where's that name that we had earlier? Invoice for whatever that name is, and then we're also going to do the date today, so we'll just go now. And then to make the date look pretty, we'll format the date and I believe we want DO month, month. No, we want month, month DO. So like March the 3rd, year, 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 year 2024 or something like that. Okay, great. That should be fine. We can then use this formatted date uh, as the date. The name, we will just get the same name that we had before, which in my case is going to be the task name. Email address will be the task email, which we can find under custom fields. And then aggregate the line items and total amount, we, we can take care of uh, momentarily, um, which looks nice. But for now, I'm just gonna say like example, other example, and then we'll just say like $500 or something. Um, I just need to see how this looks before I do anything. For the new invoice um, location, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just gonna dump it into like a basic thing. Um, if, I, if I run this now, what's gonna happen is this will run twice, one for both of these flows. So I'm just gonna go to list time entries and then set this limit to one, hypothetically, just so that I only run this puppy once because I don't really wanna generate a bunch of Google Docs if I don't have to. <coughs> okay, there's a WebView link, so we're gonna access that WebView link here. And then you'll see that the work, okay, so this, <laughs> this did not look like it worked very well. It's just, MM just ended up being the um, number of the months, so 03, so I got that wrong. I think it needs to be MO. So I'll, I might do MO and then DO. <clears throat> it said the 31st for some reason. Oh, right, because I'm in Europe and my time zones are different. So uh, I'm just in a different place than the time zone that my make um, account is. So. It's saying that it's still the 31st, but really it's the first. That might be a problem later, but we'll debug together. Work performed, um, I then have a space, so I need to see if I can get rid of that. An example, other example, then there's some subtotal, or I guess total in this case. So great, all, most of this looks really good. All I need to do is just go in and then edit um, a couple of these more procedural things. So let's go MO, see how that works. Uh, we had an additional line here, it looks like. So I'm gonna remove that. And then I left total amount as is. Okay, great. Let's run this puppy one more time, make sure that it's good. The reason I'm spending a little bit more time on this now, by the way, is because uh, when I get this right, then we can do the rest of the, the flows fairly easily because they're all similar in nature. Okay, great, two from work perform total. Awesome, there are a couple other things that you need legally in an invoice, um, just a heads up. So I think you need like your address in most places around the world and you might need a couple of other fields. Uh, but if you're curious about what that looks like, just jump on over to like invoice template um, on Google and, and you know type in the name of, of whatever your locale is or maybe where the, the place that you are going to be or the place that your company is, is physically registered in. Um, is because you know if you have to add a couple of other things like your street address or you can't use a PO box or whatever, that might be a little bit weird. Uh, and then that way we don't have to use PandaDoc and I don't have to go through like another platform. Most people are probably familiar with Google Docs, that makes sense. Okay, great, so now we have sort of a question logically. So we're listing a bunch of time entries here. I'm just gonna say we're listing 200. We're paying them once a month, right? On the first of the month. Um, how do we go out and how do we like aggregate? How, how do we add up all of these time entries essentially? And there are a couple different ways you could do it. So see here, there's like a text aggregator. There's also a numeric aggregator. I'm actually gonna use both, but we can't just stick them one after the other like this because then the flow is, is not, well, I don't know if we can stick it next to each other actually, let me see. Let's do set multiple variables. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll say, um, 
let's do hours, hours at $1.25. And then we will say 83. We should probably round this as well now that I'm looking at it. Uh, well, actually, I guess we can't round people's money. <laughs> Not to the nearest integer anyway. So maybe I'll just leave it at that for now. Um, I think we may be able to do this. I don't actually know. Let's set multiple variables. No, we can't. We can only access the text aggregator. That's unfortunate. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, what this text aggregator is going to do is just going to generate a bunch of um, lines of text that say, you know, 3.3335 hours at $25 an hour is, you know, $83, for instance. And then we can just add them all up. I think we also might need a new line. So I'm just going to add this um, for now. Yeah, it looks like there's a, a row separator. So maybe we use a new row. I'm not entirely sure if that's going to work, but we can give it a try. The issue with this, though, is anytime you use an aggregator in make.com, uh, you lose access to anything inside of the aggregator, specifically the source module. Um, so I, I can no longer access the source module, for instance, which is sort of annoying. There may be um, another way that I could do this, but I think instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a router. And then let me think. I think I can put a router here. I think I can do this. Yes. Then I'm also going to put a router here for my number aggregator. And then I'm going to make this source module the set multiple variables. Aggregate function is going to be sum. The value that I'm summing is subtotal. And then I'm going to use set and get variables in order to um, pull the data um, in the other route. So the name of this is going to be, let's just say like subtotal amount. Um, I think I can actually just use the word subtotal. And then uh, what I'm going to put in there is the aggregated result. The variable lifetime needs to be one cycle, which is nice. But what I'm also going to do is then I'm going to go down here and click get. And I'm just going to say get multiple variables because it's just always better to use the multiple wherever possible. I believe I call this subtotal, right? So now I'm going to get the subtotal at the bottom route. And then the way that these are connected is whatever route is connected first is the first route to go. So because I'm pulling the get afterwards, I need to connect this first, I need to connect that second. This looks pretty good. Um, I believe I'm going to have access to everything that I need, but we'll see. Make.com is always sort of give and take with this stuff. You know, you need to test it out a little bit. Sometimes the functions don't work exactly how you expect it and that sort of deal. For aggregated line items, I'm just going to paste the text. And then the total amount, I'm just going to paste the subtotal. Um, let's format the number. And then for decimal points, we'll use this for decimal separator. Uh, oh, I get it. I can actually format. OK, great. Let's do two decimal points. Let's do period as a separator. This will be the 1,000 separator. That looks good. And then while I'm at it, I should probably format the um, aggregator here as well to two decimal points, because if I didn't, that would be kind of ugly, just in context. OK, great. Uh, from there, we should just generate one invoice. And let's see how it goes. Fully expecting there to be some type of error. Hmm, that looks, oh, hold on. Do we run this twice? I don't think there's any reason why we needed to run this twice. I don't think we should have ran this once. Yeah, not really sure why we had to run it twice. So yeah, okay, and then it ran twice here. Uh, we should have aggregated that, so I'm not really sure why there are multiple bundles coming out. I mean, operation one looks good. Number of hour, well, I guess I need to round this. But anyway, number of hours at whatever is equal to, oh, I put two dollar signs here. I should only put one. Uh, let's format this number as well. And then let's say two, let's do period, let's do comma, and then go. Nice. Um, and then it might be because of this router now that I'm thinking about it. I don't, I don't actually know. But we're setting a variable, what, twice? And then we are aggregating this. Hmm. Is it this row separator, potentially? No, I don't think so. We may just not be able to use set multiple variables as a source. Uh, I may have had a problem with this before. So I'm just not going to generate the invoice anymore, and then I'm just going to run this and see. 
logically why this is going twice. We may have to use list time entries now that I'm thinking about it, uh, which is unfortunate. Well, I guess it's not super unfortunate. Here, we'll use list all time entries. This will also be list all time entries. We're now gonna run this the same number of times and maybe it'll only run once, okay. Uh, looks like it added up the two, which is nice. And then here it didn't add a line separator because I removed the row separator. So we'll run this puppy again. Okay, we got two lines now, both with the separated amounts. And then here that we have the result, which is all over the place. So I'll, um, actually we'll just format the subtotal as it comes in. Like this, that should be good. Now we have the subtotal, which should reflect the new rounded amount. And then if I scroll down here, we have um, task name, email address, aggregated line items should be good. Total amount, which I guess I'm formatting the subtotal twice now, which I don't need to do. I should, uh, ideally you'd always do this at the source rather than at the, um, the destination. Okay, great. Let's give this puppy a try. I, uh, I'll always do this. I'll always like align automatically. And then I will always be like, shit, that looks terrible. And then I'll always go back and then try and organize it like this. I generally like to have my main flow in like the bottom uh, route linearly. And then if I ever have to use a router, there's another reason why I don't like routers that kind of screw with my visual flow. But if I ever have to use a router, then I'll usually stick it on top. I learned that from, um, uh, my, my good friend and business partner. <coughs> okay. Now we have this link, I can open it up. Awesome, that looks cool. So, you know, we add that up. Oh, I need to put a dollar sign on the total. Uh, but aside from that, I mean, you know, this is basically all the information that you'd need in, a, in an invoice. Looks like I need to fix the date again because I don't think that I put the, yeah, let's do date, time, formatting, tokens, and just figure out exactly how to do this. Um, oh, I guess we need MMMM. So what we need to do in order to get like the word March or whatever is M M M M. And then, uh, okay. Invoice for task name format date. Okay. And then total amount needs to be a dollar sign. Well, I think we can probably just do this where I'm setting it. Right. Let's put the dollar sign here. Cool. That looks good. Let's run this test one final time. Verify that this very basic invoice template works. Pasting it in, nice, that looks pretty cool. Let's make this a little prettier. We'll make it enter 12 point font and then we will add uh, 1.5 lines. Very legit, you know, you can add your logo in the top right hand corner if you want to. Let me see if maybe I can drag and drop mine in there. Man, there are a lot of left clicks, good God. Maybe if I type in my logo here, oh yeah, that looks nice, much better, much better. Thank you, LinkedIn. Um, we're just going to float this wherever I want. I think that's how I do it. Uh, no, I don't want to break the text in front of text. There we go. Wonderful. What a fancy invoice. Yeah, your invoice may be, uh, may be nicer than this. I don't even know how to make mine go up. Maybe I need to put this in the header or something. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it and I don't remember how to get a header on, uh, Oh yeah. Okay. Just click this button and maybe I paste it up there and I put it like right over there. Oof, man, that's fancy. Incredible. <laughs> okay. I mean, to be honest, I think that kind of looks like shit, but Hey, what are you going to do guys? This is a five minute invoice template. So great. We have our, you know, we have our, our lovely um, invoice here. The question is now, how do we, um, uh, how do we get like the date range? So we basically we want to get uh, the date range from the first day of the month to like the last day of the month essentially, or like the full month. Um, this can be pretty weird to do in make.com unfortunately, but we can take advantage of the fact that we are going to be running this scenario on the first day of the month. And so basically in order to get the last day of the month, we only really need to go back a little bit. Um, this may not work while I'm like showing it here, but uh, you know, bear with me and, and we'll, we'll get there together. So under this list time entries module, you can set an end date and then you can also set a, a start date. And so if you think about it, this scenario is going to be running every month on the first of the month at 0000, 000 basically at 12 AM. 
So if we go back one minute, then it will technically be the last minute of the previous month. So we can set that as our end date for the period that we're adding up since we're doing it once a month. The reason why this is smart is because it eliminates a lot of like the BS of dealing with like the last day of various months. You know, some months have like 30 days, other months have like 31 days, other months have 28. And once every four years, we're lucky with the 29th. So, you know, dealing with all that stuff is kind of annoying. Wouldn't it be way cooler if we could just pull a now? And then we could say add days, or sorry, add minutes. And then we could just go now negative one. Um, presumably, this is going to run 0, 0, 0, 0. This is going to run within a couple of milliseconds. So this is going to be, um, this is going to go all the way up to 11.59 on the last day of the previous month, which is nice. And then for the start date, um, a couple different things we can do, but I think we're probably just going to add months. We're going to grab now, <clears throat> and then we're going to just do minus one. Now, it's worth noting that my time zone is set up uh, 8.55 a.m., and I think that in like five minutes it'll technically be zero, zero. So this probably isn't going to work exactly like how we want it to, just for my purposes. Uh, I'm just going to add some weird user ID stuff here to run this module. Okay, so because it's counting March 1st, yeah, that's really funny. I'm actually really close to the exact date that I'd be running this on. Maybe we can get lucky, and if I last another four minutes, we can, we can run it. But basically, it's saying that the end date is March 31st, the start date's February 29th, because it's counting this as the last day of the month. But you can see how it, how it sort of picks the last day of the month. So this is going to be uh, March the 1st, basically, and then this is going to be March 31st at 11.59 p.m. Um, so, so all is well there. This is showing that like our date picker is, is working. So um, just because you know these things can get pretty complicated pretty quickly, I'm then just going to remain, uh, rename this. I'll say list staff members uh, because I'm going to make this a blueprint. I'll say list time entries. This already says list time entries. I just want to be able to see it in big text. I'm going to call that generate line items. I'm then going to call this, uh, oh, sorry, this isn't actually generate line items. This is generate line items. This is going to be sum total or get, no, uh, let's just say sum total. This is going to be generate invoice template. And then you can imagine how uh, later on you could add maybe a little email module here that like emails it to them at the end of every month with uh, um, Google Doc, and then maybe if you're using DocuSign or something like that, now you send it over with like a way for them to sign. It's a very simple and very straightforward sort of payment uh, mechanism here. But this will essentially allow you to automate all of your um, hourly rate contractors, assuming that you have a place to store the data under a staff tracker, then maybe an example payroll list. But okay, great. So this is probably the most difficult one. Um, and now that we're done with this, you know, you can tie this very easily into the project based and then the salary. And I'll show you how to do that just for completeness sake. Just like the last scenario, we're gonna list the staff members. We don't actually need to list the time entries anymore. What we need to do is we need to list the tasks. So we're, instead of listing time entries, going to go to click up, and then we're just gonna go list all tasks. And this is basically gonna swap this out. Um, so I'm just gonna add this to the flow over here a little bit ahead, just so I can test this first. The list ID is going to be selected, and so we're then going to go into workspace, Space is gonna be test build again, just because that's where I'm personally doing them. And then uh, we're doing the folder list list, and then I believe example payroll list, there we go. Uh, assignee IDs, I'm going to map in the previous assignee ID from the list staff members, all previous tasks. So we're gonna to go to assignees and then user ID. We're not going to worry about the statuses for now, just because I've set them all to to do, but you can imagine how maybe you only wanna get the completed tasks or something, right? And then we're just gonna set this as a really high limit just so we can run this puppy. I need to add in a bunch of annoying assignee info because otherwise my, oh, what am I doing here? My flow isn't gonna work regardless. Here, I'll just trigger this. Okay, great, and now we have some tasks. Um, okay, great, we have the name of the task, which in this case is strategy, this case is website development. You know what I'm realizing? I'm realizing we didn't add the name of the task to this aggregator. So we should be able just to say, um, we should actually just be able to add the task name in here. Mm, 
maybe I don't want to do that because then we need to add another module. Anywho, you can tie this in really easily to list staff members and list tasks associated with every staff member and then have it iterate over it. Um, for, the, for now, because we just have access to this at the top level of the aggregator, I'm just going to use it. But yeah, you can use that in the um, hourly rate thing as well. Anyway, we've got the time entries here. We don't actually need to do any of that um, fun stuff. We are also going to have a numeric aggregator and a line or a text aggregator, which is nice. But I'm just going to delete this. It's going to delete all the aggregator. I'm then going to combine this in. Uh, we don't actually need to set the hourly rate or the total because all the information is just going to be available to us really simply at like the top level of the ClickUp custom field. And then what we need to do is we need to sum the total just like we did before. But the field that we're going to sum over is this custom field here, uh, which is called internal budget. And so this is how we're going to get our, uh, our total. So I'm going to use the ClickUp list tasks as my source. So every time that this runs once, it's now going to aggregate all of the bundles that it generates. So one, two in this case, uh, and then sum it. And then for generate line items, uh, what I'm going to do is this is technically a money field in ClickUp, so it may already be formatted, but I'm going to say um, the name of the task. So it'll be, I don't know, strategy. And then a colon and then a space and then uh, this internal budget. And we'll see if it's a dollar sign or, or if it has all the formatting that we'll need. We'll use our list all tasks as the source. And then we have the same pattern here between subtotal and um, Oh, and yeah, I don't know if we actually need this, so I'm gonna remove the dollar sign again. Um, t -t -t I think that's it. Yeah, we just need to fill in the variables now. So same very basic invoice template. Aggregated line items are gonna be here in text. Total amount is going to be under here in subtotal. Date should be the same, everything else should be the same. Oh, I, I need to go in here and then change MMMM. So full month name. Great. Um, now that we've generated this once, why don't we go create, pump this puppy through. Let's see how it goes. Got a web view link here. Uh, work perform strategy, website development. So all we need to do is just add a dollar sign basically and then format the number, which we did not do anymore. So I'm gonna add a dollar sign here to format number. Oops, wrong one. I think we were aware here. So I'm going to add a dollar sign to this, and then I'm just going to format it so there are two, um, uh, let me see, that's the wrong flow. I'm just going to generate it so that there are two um, bullet points here. <laughs> Not bullet points, I'm very sleepy. We're going format number, we're going this, and then we're going to decimal points two, um, decimal separator, period, and then thousand separator, comma, wonderful. That should be good. And then this does not seem to be working. I'm not exactly sure why. But we'll just add that up so that in the subtotal we have a dollar sign, and then strategy we have a dollar sign, and then here we have a dollar sign. You can imagine how you can get fancy with this. You could add the date in the line item that you are generating. You can do a lot. Uh, but I just want to show you guys how to do this as simply as possible first. Okay, great. Now we have strategy, we have website development, we have a total. Awesome. Looks very good. And hey, looks like the date is correct now. Probably because it's over, yeah, it's over nine, and we're on nine hours behind uh, my time zone. Awesome. That's pretty straightforward. The last flow is much, much simpler. All we do is we list the staff members. So I'm just going to paste in from a previous flow so I don't have to spend time um, generating all of that other info. And then we paste in our very basic invoice template. And all we're going to do now is we're going to list the staff members. I'm only listing one, but you can imagine how you'd list all of them. And then we are going to just add in a single line item. And that single line item is just going to be called, you know, in my case, I'm going to say monthly. And then I'm going to say, or maybe, maybe we can do like monthly fee or something if you don't want to use the word salary. And we can go down to custom fields and then monthly salary. And I'm just going to do my little format. So format number, we'll go two decimal points, and then that's good. And then the total amount is just going to be the same thing. We're just going to remove this monthly fee. Um, yeah, that should be it. So now we're going to generate this.
take a look at this web view link and then voila that's it okay so the question is where do we go from here you know we've generated cool invoice templates that may or may not be lacking certain things depending on where you live make sure to get that double checked before you uh, start sending them out i don't want to be responsible for any legal issue or financial issue of course i'm not a lawyer or a financial analyst but um where do we go from here really like where could you go to take this to the next level what i've done historically is i use a neobank called mercury mercury is amazing you know, mercury the planet yes my bank is on mercury um, there's another one called brex which is really cool and basically these neobanks are banks that are very similar to traditional sort of um you know brick and mortar banks it's just you can only really access them from the internet and so you just do all of your servicing through the internet and that sort of thing and the really cool part about both Brex and Mercury is that they have APIs. And so if they have an API, that means obviously you can automate shit, right? So what I'll do is I will generate an invoice using a flow very similar to this. And then I will do it using Pandadoc, which is a signature request platform. And so I'll have a little place for them to put a signature. And it says like, you know, I hereby, um, you know, agree or acknowledge, or, you know, this is like a, an invoice that I've generated, blah, blah, blah. And then they sign it and this like verifies that they have obviously agreed to the terms on this and that you know they're the ones that have sort of had the final say uh, which is important by the way for i think contractors more generally they need to have the final say in any any contract or pay stub or anything like that anyway i tie that signature to an api call that goes over to mercury in my case and then that'll go and that'll pre-generate a um, ach transaction and then that ach transaction is queued up and then all we have to do once a month is just go through this list and just go check, 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 check. I don't actually recommend completely automating that process. And I don't actually recommend completely automating payments in general because there's a lot of money. If for whatever reason there's a one in 1,000 chance and your flow adds a couple of extra decimal points, you might be fucked. So be careful when you're automating payments, of course. I hope that goes without saying. But yeah, I usually recommend some type of last human step. But still, that step is now five minutes instead of like, you know, 15 or 20 hours a week negotiating with various accounting firms and whatnot. I should mention about bookkeeping and accounting. It's obviously very easy to then just generate a PDF of this and then just add this to like some data room or some big Google Drive where you store all this stuff. Or maybe just send it to your accountant. But yeah, in a nutshell, that's more or less how I build out these flows. Um, you can sell this flow for a fair amount of money because you're solving a very important problem that like founders know personally. It's not a very like important problem for them to be spending their time on if you think about it like it's just templating and dragging and dropping amounts and copying things from excel spreadsheets but it's important insofar that they're spending a fuck ton of their time on it and so it's like a pressing need um, but you can also just employ this in your own business to see some cost savings and benefits and ideally you would do it in both you know the work that you're doing maybe for other people if you're in automation and then the invoicing process that you might be doing internally if you have other people working for you that sort of thing Awesome. I hope that makes sense. If you guys got any questions about what payroll or automating payments looks like for a use case that I might not have covered, maybe like commission payments or something like that, feel free to drop a comment down below. More than happy to help you guys with that. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, do all that fun YouTube stuff. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks so much.